Last time, I said that I would continue this series if the video got 200 likes. And yeah, it, it got 200 likes. I also said I would continue this series and upload a Hawkland video on the same day if it got 250 likes. And it got 250 likes. So welcome back to the Arcturian Order. We've defeated the Terrors of the Dread League. For now, I assume things might may change in the future. I know there's still a lot of interesting events and stuff we have to do in our focus tree, but we'll see exactly what happens. Right now, we're starting the war trials because we defeated a certain uh, monarch that, that we have to put on trial now. We, I guess what will happen to her is still in question and we can decide two things it looks like. Every pony can change, or once a villain, always a villain. I don't know exactly what we'll be doing. We are the good guys, but who knows what evil things she could do in the future. Just, I'm just saying. And an update on the rest of the world, they're all squabbling for their place. Some people are failing, other people are also failing like always. <laughs> Um, the Griffonian Empire is surprisingly doing pretty bad. They've been, like, stuck in a civil war forever. Like, when Wingbardi gets this strong, you know the Empire's doing something wrong. Quilia's kind of just sitting around waiting for the Herzland to be united, too. Best case scenarios, they never get united, so then we can pick a fight with the Republic before anything really starts going wrong. The Republic is pretty strong, but, like... Yeah, they're, they're just pretty strong. I don't know. There's no buts to it. Ah, oh, yes. The Queen's Trial, the fate of Rosa. So the war is over and Magehold is no more. Rosa has been captured and awaits her trial. One side of the court supports her redemption, saying that Rosa will be a great asset if she is redeemed. They can be heard discussing the terms of her reformation. The other side of the court desires only one thing, the death of Rosa. Okay, so we have two pretty clear options. Here's the deal, okay? There, there's a strategy in this. We need to convince her that we're the good guys and get her on our side, you know? Demonetizing her is only going to please a small minority of people. We need to convince her to help us with our greater strategy, okay? Okay? What? There, there's- I don't think there's anywhere for us to expand, though. Just, like, looking for the future. Because... Well, we're harmonic, so I guess we're technically the good guys and these are our friends and we will never be able to justify against them. So I guess I shouldn't worry too much. We'll just protect people, but like, all these guys are in a faction. All four of them. They're, they're guaranteed by the River Republic, well at least Farbrook and Water Towns. So it's not looking so good for us right now for expansion opportunities. Oh yes, and I hope you like the Knights of the Round Circle. Their garrison forms a circle around the great plains of where these three states meet. It's where the great battle against the Dread League was fought that determined our victory right by this factory. So we've decided that we will reform Rosa. It's going to be a long process, it sounds like. It probably will involve a lot of, you know brainwashing, doing some totally good guy stuff. So meeting with William. So William is cheerful as he greets Rosa at her new dwelling inside the inner walls of one of the larger castles, complimenting her on how well she looks without being dead from the neck up. No, this, this, this William guy, he, I think this William guy is definitely, you know, <laughs> a simp. So you can do this, Rosa, you're stronger than you think, or you must do this well, your failure would shame all of us. Obviously we have to choose the option that he would do. This isn't like what I would do, like I'm obviously not a simp, it's obviously this guy. We're just, you know, we're just, um, we're just choosing this option for, for, for him because that's what he would choose. And I read this in the change logs too for the, um, for an update to this mod, but it only costs three civilian factories now to create an agency. Oh, Rosa makes a friend. How, how nice. Good, 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 good job making a friend, you know? Rosa worries she's too scary and corrupted. <laughs> no, that, that's good. You wanna, you want to strike fear into the hearts of the enemies once, once you're on our side, of course. So Rosa's final test, the final test before Rosa can truly be considered redeemed has come. It has been decided that she must embark on a quest along an ancient psychic path in the mountains where it is said that the founder of the order first gained his cause and the shield of hope from Arcturia herself. Rosa must make that same journey and bear the strain on her soul in full. If she returns successful, then she shall be given a 
new assurance and her freedom. Oh yay, she she turned over a new leaf. And of course, the best part of this entire thing is she wants to be a general, of course. That's that's great. Is she a good general? Not like anything amazing. Is she even better than William Steelbeak? Yeah, she can't be better than Will Will William Steelbeak. I guess most of his stuff is focused on defense, but he has like all these traits and he's not actually like that good of a general. I guess Infantry division attack, I guess that's good. And then she can get regular infantry leader too on top of that. Oh, and look, we're the Arcturian Kingdom now. Yeah, the Holy Order, once named the Arcturian Order, fancies themselves as a kingdom with the vanquishing of the Dreadly. Yeah, that's nice, onwards to glory. Oh no, this, this, this is like the Illuminati all over again. We're getting cryptic messages from secret dark beings from the, from the shadow. I don't know if we need to like decrypt this or anything. Maybe this, maybe someone in the comments can decrypt it, you know? <laughs> Breakthrough, then dead end. Okay, so we're kind of investigating the death of Headmaster Torig again. One segment of the team took a closer look at the rifle using advanced ballistics to determine that the gun in question used a highly specialized round known to only be craft in Equestria. While these rounds are not especially rare, very few have been imported into our region of the globe. Another segment of the team turned their attention towards investigating the missing evidence from the original case. They employed the services of a very delicate magical sensor which scanned the room. What they discovered were mostly the faint after effects of telekinetic magic. Okay, so like we're kind of discovering weird things going on here. How strange we must keep this investigation active. Yeah, for sure. I know. No weird things happen, but I've, I've never played as the Arcturian Order before. Okay, so we've tracked the assassin of Headmaster Torig to a cave, and it looks like we found a note from them, which said, Torg's dead and I'm meeting our employers in a few hours. I don't trust them in the slightest, but we need the bits. If you got here and I'm not around, run. These guys don't strike me as the kind who'd... <laughs> with the loose ends. So along with the message, there are a pair of coordinates. While no context for them is provided, they seem to lead to a location within the Dread Peninsula. Okay. And more of this too. This is similar to um, the Wendigos, I believe, from my Dread League playthrough. So I assume this is kind of the same thing, except that they're popping up with while we're the good guys instead of the bad guys, yeah. So we've left the safety of Tarpian Rock and we've headed for the newly conquered Dread Peninsula. Due to the remote nature of this location, we will be unable to communicate with our investigators while they're in the field. All we can do is wait and pray and hope that they will come back with some answers. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, the end of the line. At daybreak, a single wagon approached one of our fortresses along the former Arcturian Dread League border. First, the team progressed through the Dread Peninsula, arriving at their destination without a hitch. So we went to this specific town and we found some written records. This was mostly comprised of records of births, deaths, and marriages, all dating back to no sooner than 1300 years ago. So among these works, there was also a diary belonging to the Hamlet's final priest that told the story of a cult which had taken root in the town and included many of the villagers. At first, it seemed to be merely a more prognostic extension of their organized religion. So the activities grew darker and it ended with a spree of gruesome murders. So, yeah, didn't go so well. So, at this point, the priest had decided to band together with the loyal members of his community in an effort to remove them. However, according to the priest's final entry, this was unsuccessful due to the intervention of a demon creature which the priest described as the root of all ills which had plagued them, a demon he la labels the Wendigo. As the team finished reading this, they noticed a sudden drop in temperature. At first, this was merely attributed to the setting of the sun. However, as the temperature continued to plunge well below the seasonal average, the team realized that something was gravely amiss. By night, the air was frigid, with each exhale turning into a white puff of vapor. It was in this climate that the Wendigo besets the investigation. This demon materialized from the ice and snow, transforming into a terrifying equine entity which stood nearly 10 meters tall. Only winter frost to manage to escape. Okay, that's unsettling. Yeah, um, this focus seems fun, seems really... Fun and amazing. Okay, well, um, so the story has been collaborated in the worst way possible. 
Over the past few days, our garrisons throughout the Dread Peninsula have been mysteriously quiet, failing to communicate with Darby and Rock. Not even the scribes at Magehold, who are usually a rather talkative bunch, have been able to get a word through. This is highly concerning in light of recent news related to the recent demise of the investigation looking into Headmaster Torg's assassination. Today, various border fortresses reported sightings of large equine creatures constructed of snow and ice. For now, they stay within in the former lands of the Dread League. However, the mere sight of them is worrisome. Oh no, this can't be good. Oh yeah, th there they are, led by, um, <laughs> well, what a beautiful image right there. So we better get our army on that border. I probably should have had them set there in anticipation of something like this happening. Oh look, oh, we have a little new focus right here, the last battle. Okay, we'll do that. We'll get 20 political power. It's not like we really need political power considering we don't really have anything to do with it. We have our new army, at least, with just your friendly army. Some nice, you know, six artillery divisions. Hmm, it seems like they're awfully powerful, honestly. I guess we probably should move our spies into Magehold again. Yeah, they seem rather aggressive again. We were stupid enough not building the forts the first time. There. Okay, okay, we encircled a lot of their army. They're just like so insanely aggressive that it's it's crazy. Adaptable. William Steelbeak is pretty good. That's that's nice to have adaptable. Now Rosa has not one, but two 10% modifiers to infantry attack, which that's, that has to be pretty decent. Okay, there, there we go. We didn't even have to get to Machel. Okay, the end of the second war for the Dread Peninsula. So, for the second time within recent years, our knights stand victorious within the streets of Machel. The Wendigo threat has been dealt with, and the great demons have been put to the sword by the bravery and valor of our knights. For now, there is much jubilation with parades and festivals planned throughout the kingdom. The knights who have sacrificed so much can now return home to a well-deserved hero's welcome. A fitting end to this chapter of our history. Nice. I think we get a new focus tree, yeah. Wow, this is actually a kind of, this is a pretty decent focus tree. Oh, and a holy union between life and death. The bells ring for William Steelbeak and Rose. <laughs> uh, well, just perfect, they'll make the perfect couple, yeah, sure. Sure, sure thing. Yes, and I'm very pleased that we hit that like goal and got to do an episode two in the Arcturian Order. Very interesting stuff that we could have missed out on. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you later for some Hawkland fun. <laughs> I know there's a lot of interesting stuff there, but see you then. Mm -hmm.